So a lot developing today, starting with the testing of several city employees for COVID-19, including yourself, Mayor. Yes, I went and got tested today. Um, look, it's, um, I've been encouraging people to go and get tested. And we've talked about the, the value and the importance of testing because the testing represent, represents our eyes as to where the virus is and how prevalent it is in our community. And it was important for me to, uh, to get tested myself and to be an example. Uh, you know, it's kind of hard to encourage other people to do it if you don't do it yourself. And then especially in light of Council Member Letitia Plummer uh, being tested positively, it just goes to show that this virus has no respect of persons, no, doesn't care what your title is, uh, it's out there and it can, and, and, it, and you can be infected. So testing is important and I, I went and did it today. And, and let me just say, tell people, it is quite painless. It doesn't take long at all. And it's better to know than not to know. And did you get your results, Mayor? Not yet, not yet. They're telling me probably in about a day or two, I'll, I will get the results and I'm hoping everything will be fine. Um, that's my hope, but if not, you know, then I, you know, I, I'll, I'll quarantine myself uh, for the requisite period of time. And, um, but it's better to know because you can be asymptomatic, 25, 30% of the people are walking around with no symptoms, no headaches, no um, uh, nausea, anything like that, no tightness of chest, and I feel fine, I feel great, uh, but that doesn't mean that, that, that I'm not carrying this, uh, this virus. And was this the first time you've been tested for COVID-19? This is the first time that, I, that I've been tested. Uh, I've not had any problems, but at the same time, you know, as things, as, as we start to reopen, the testing becomes even more important. I mean, that's step one. The contact tracing becomes step two. Um, and then it's, and just because you tested and you, and you test negative, for example, it doesn't mean that the very next day of, of the next week or the next month, um, you know, you shouldn't take the opportunity to be tested again. So, but this was step, this was step one. And, uh, I wanted to do it because more and more people are getting out. There's more activity. And so the testing, the face covering, the social distancing, all of those things are more important now quite frankly, uh, uh, than they were a few weeks ago. In light of Councilwoman Plummer's positive test result that we learned about yesterday, were other members of City Hall also tested today along with you, Mayor? I think most of the members of City Council got tested today and probably their staff went to uh, one of the several places, public testing sites today uh, to be tested. Um, I know of several council members that actually went and got tested. So many did. And then, as you know, um, uh, starting next week, not tomorrow, but starting next week, uh, for a couple of weeks, we're going to be meeting um, virtually. We won't be meeting in, in, in person, uh, but we'll be meeting virtually and, and we're working through the protocol so that the public will know just how to continue to communicate with us. So testing today amid balancing a budget. Let's yeah. talk about the budget. You unveiled the proposed budget with significant cuts where did the budget fall short, Mayor? Well, is the, the budget deficit, the budget gap is $169 million. It's the largest in the city's history. You know, I thought um, uh, a little over four years ago when we were dealing with the rising cost of pension in 2016, that that was the largest in the city's history. Uh, but this one surpasses all of them. So it's a $169 million budgetary gap that we're having to fill. I will tell you, um, based on the sales tax, the drop in sales ta tax, um, we are losing about uh, 2020 and 21. We're estimating to have a reduction in sales tax of about $107 million. That is, that is significant, you know, for, this, for the city of Houston. We have, to balance, a, we have to balance okay. our books. And that's a problem, not just for the city of Houston, but most major cities across the country now in light of COVID-19. That's a problem across the board. Um, and we can't balance it without making some significant reductions. And so, for example, um, you know, the five police cadet classes, we're having to defer, delay them, delay them for right now. We simply don't have the money to move forward on that. Uh, about 3,000 of the city of Houston's employees will be furloughed, not laid off, but furloughed, about 10 days in a, in a year that they will have to, you know, since give up a paid day. Um, 
you know, that will make up some of it. That, does, that will not apply to police and fire and to those workers who are out there picking up our garbage and, and doing the recycling, picking up the recycling, uh, but about 3,000. And then we're going to reach into our fund balance, um, largest amount, $98 million we will pull from our fund balance. And then the economic stabilization fund, like our rainy day fund, we're pulling the entire amount from that that'll take us down to zero. It'll put us in a precarious state with hurricane season approaching in June. Uh, but these are things that we had to do, had no choice, in order to balance the city's budget. And then hopefully we'll take a look, the federal government will give us some flexibility to pull some dollars from the Federal CARES Act, the monies that they have given us, uh, for those employees that we've had to redeploy to fight COVID-19. Mm -hmm. uh, Mayor, hold on just one yeah. second. He's gonna add something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're talking about, you mentioned that the rainy day fund, you're having to pull from it, Mayor. So the backup plan in this case, because we know with the city of Houston, the region that we're in, that we can have weather and a catastrophic flood right. or hurricane at any time. So is the backup plan to rely on those federal dollars? Well, the backup plan is that, you know, the federal government has given us some additional guidelines at what dollars uh, we can pull from the federal CARES funding that we have already received. Um, so for, ex for, for example, um, where there are city employees who were redeployed to deal specifically with COVID related matters, we can, uh, we can take the cost of those employees and pull from the federal CARES funding. You can use the dollars to, to, uh, to fill, be a revenue filler, but for the cost of the city employees that whose uh, time was placed on specifically addressing COVID matters. We can cost that out and pull those dollars down. We are doing that assessment now. My hope is between now and the time we have to vote on the budget uh, that we'll be giving some additional flexibility to pull some dollars away from the 400 million that we have received uh, and to use, utilize that to put back in the budget. But we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But even with the 400 million that we have already received, bear in mind the health department has already made it clear to me that they need about 200 million of that just for testing and contact tracing. So that's already taking a more than about 50% of those dollars, those federal dollars will have to be used by the health department to fight COVID with testing and contact tracing. Mayor, I wanna circle back around to you talked about the cadet classes being cut, yes. but reassuring Houstonians that their essential services and their safety will still be intact, that when they call for emergency services, they will still be there. But what we've done is that we are deferring the cadet classes, but we have put additional dollars in the budget for, for overtime for police. So we are beefing up the overtime. We're just gonna have to work those existing uh, uh, police officers more. But my hope is if we get any degree of flexibility uh, from the federal government, that the number one priority would be to bring back those uh, five cadet classes uh, so that we can continue to increase the number of police officers in the city. That's the number one priority. We need more. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, we are going to be providing dollars. Um, we're putting dollars in the budget for overtime for the Houston Police um, uh, Department. So that's number one. The second one is that if we get additional flexibility, uh, we, we won't be furloughing. Uh, nearly as many of our city employees. That's enough. That will be priority number two. And then third would be to replenish our economic stabilization fund and the fund balance with the hurricane season right around the corner. Yeah, we have to keep in mind that this is a proposal. So those dollars could be found and those furloughs could not be as bad as such. That's, that's, that, that is our hope. If the, if, if the federal government would give us some additional flexibility, and we're looking at the guidelines that just came out a couple of weeks ago, where we may be able to tap into some of those federal dollars in order to, um, let's say, fill some of the budgetary hole. We just can't use the federal dollars as a revenue filler. But where um, city employees and personnel who have been used directly to combat COVID-19, I think there may be some flexibility to, um, to pull from the federal dollars to pay for the cost of those employees. If that's the case, um, then that will help to ease some of the reductions that we're having to make in this proposed budget. 
So we're talking about the budget, which looks forward. Let's talk about the present and reopening. How is Houston handling the current phase of the reopening process, Mayor Turner? Well, it's, 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 it, look, it's problematic. I think the messaging is a little bit confusing um, and that makes it very difficult. Let me just say, Mia, for the first, for the, for the months of March and April, um, the city of Houston um, collectively did a wonderful job. We blunted the, the progression of this, of this virus. We flattened the curve. And as a result, when you look at our numbers in terms of positive cases, and especially the number of people who have died as a result of COVID-19, our numbers have been relatively on the low end when you compare it to other major cities uh, our size or even like to New Orleans. My concern is as now people, you know, people have been in their homes for two months, they're becoming restless, uh, they're getting a little bit tired of just staying home. And as they hear about things opening up, people are somewhat rushing out and they are kind of forgetting the importance of social distancing and putting on their, their face coverings, their masks. And so um, if we, we, can, we can open up, but we have to be very measured in how we do it. And we, have to be, and we have to continue to practice the things that have worked so well for the people in the city of Houston. Social distancing, face coverings. If you ignore that, then the virus is going to remind us all that it has never left, it's still here. That's my greatest concern, is that if, we, if, that if we're not careful, we will undo all of what we have worked so hard to achieve uh, if we don't, if we're not very careful. I want us to open up, but I just want us to do it in a very measured, methodical, safe way. And at this point in time, uh, I just have some, I have some great concerns. Mayor Turner, how long do you think we'll have to follow these protocols, the social distancing, the mask wearing? I know you've relied heavily on the medical community to offer your right. guidance, but how long do you think Houstonians will need to follow these protocols? Well, what the medical community is saying to me is that until there's a vaccine, uh, we're going to have to continue to follow some of these protocols. What they're saying is that we can, we can move forward in phases, okay? We can, we, can, we can start to reopen. We just can't do it too soon. We can't rush in. And we have to make sure that the testing and the contact tracing that infrastructure is already in place. That's what Dr. Peter Hotez from Baylor College of Medicine is saying. As long as the infrastructure is in place so that when a person is tested positively, we can do the contact tracing, then we can work to quarantine, isolate, and treat. And, and our, our medical system, our hospitals, have the capacity to handle any cases that come about, then we can move forward. But all of that has to be in place. We simply can't say, open up, and we're ignoring the data and the doctors and the medical science and hoping that things will be okay. That's flying blindly, and that won't work. And so, you know, I wish I could say to people, it, it is safe, you can move forward, everything is okay, but that's not the case. The only point that I'm saying, let's go, let's, let's start to open, let's move forward, but we also want to make sure that we are doing the testing, the contact tracing. We'll stand in close communication with our um, medical uh, hospital system so that when we're looking at the data, if I see that there's a, a, a spike that's occurring, I want to be able to say, hey, let's hold, let's put on the brakes, let's, let's pause for a moment, and let's make sure that we continue to, to manage this virus. Because until there's a vaccine, what we are doing is managing the virus. We're not eradicating it. We are managing it as we, as we move to open in our city. And if we do that, we'll do it right. Unfortunately, I will tell you in terms of putting on the brakes, um, the state has taken total control of the, 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 the ability of the county judge and myself to put on the brakes. The state has assumed that responsibility. Um, so we'll just have to, um, can uh, just monitor things very carefully and be able to utilize our voice and, and tell the people, this is what we are seeing. And then hopefully the state will step in and, and put in the proper uh, checks at the proper time. Mayor Turner, would you put on the brakes now? Do you think the state needs to pump their brakes at this point in time? I think we're moving too quickly too soon, man. I think we're moving too quickly too soon. I think the messaging is becoming very confusing and people, 
people are hearing different voices and different messages. And so they just, they just don't know. What I will simply say is that, look, we are now, we are hiring people to do the contact tracing. That infrastructure needed to be put in place first. I agreed with the initial steps where we opened up the state parks, where we did the curbside for retail. I agree with all of that. Um, I'm not necessarily opposed, for example, to the 25% on the restaurants and that nature. I'm, I'm not necessarily opposed to all of that. But when you start opening up the beaches and you see all of the number of people, for example, that are on the beaches, when you say that for the graduations, for example, that you can have a full-fledged graduation with guests and everybody coming, I'm, I am concerned. So I think we have to be very, very careful. I, I don't want people to sacrifice their health for a paycheck. And I don't want, I don't want us to open the system. And then uh, a month from now or six weeks from now, we find ourselves having to stop and pull back. People don't want to go through that again. So we just have to be very careful and very measured. And that's why I'm in, in the strongest way I know how. I am in saying to people, social distancing is still very important. Wearing your face coverings, your mask, that is critically important, especially with people with underlying medical conditions, our seniors, that's important. If you're going to church, um, space out, make sure you go and you put on your mask. All of those things are critically important. If we do those things, then yes, we can continue to open and move forward. And if we do it collectively, we can move even faster to reopen. Because I, you know, I got it, I understand. People need their jobs and we need these businesses to open up. But we just have to make sure we are doing it in a very methodical, measured way. That's my, that's, that's my message. Uh, Mayor Turner, in closing, you know, there are so many different variables that we're dealing with here, and we know you have definitely taken on some of the city's toughest challenges in the past years. Of course, Harvey comes to mind. How is the COVID crisis in comparison to Hurricane Harvey for you? This one is much more challenging. And we all remember Harvey, the worst water, I mean, more water fell on this city than on any city in the history of this country. We all remember Harvey, but let me tell you, this one is more challenging. And the reason is with Harvey, with the hurricanes, with the, with the uh, storm, you can look at the radar. I can tell you where it is. I can tell you when the hurricane is going to, is going to land. And then I can tell you when it's out of here. Okay. With this virus, you can't see it. It's the invisible enemy. You can't see it. You can be healthy and yet carrying the virus. And so our eyes to this virus become the testing. When the testing is inadequate, then you can't see where the virus is and you don't know how prevalent and how pervasive it is in your city. And then with a hurricane, at most it may be a week, a week and a half, and it's out of here, at most. This virus, we've been dealing with this virus since the first week in March in this city. And now we are into May and the virus is still here. And people are getting restless and they're tired and, and they, wanna get, they wanna get back to a normal way of, 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 of life. And then when you throw in the politics and you start getting the different messages, then it becomes very confusing. So um, this one, and this virus has touched every segment of our economy. It hasn't just been a healthcare crisis, it's been an economic crisis all at the same time. And it has challenged us in every aspect of our life. The good news for the city of Houston is that we've gone through the tax day flood, we've gone through Harvey, we've gone through Tropical Storm Imelda. Uh, we have been challenged so many times we have been hit, we've fallen, and we've picked ourselves back up, and we're very resilient. So we've gone through these storms before. 
we've gone, we've, we face huge challenges and we've always come back. And even when people counted us out after Harvey, we bounce back. We'll bounce back from this one, but we'll only do it if we work together, stay together, exercise some patience and recognize that if we do the things that have kept our numbers low, we can return much sooner, much quicker, and we'll be better after the virus and stronger and more resilient than we were before. But we have to, we have to be patient and we have to work together. And I am optimistic that when all is said and done, Houston, Houston will move forward in a, in a, in a magnanimous way. And again, we'll show to the world that this is a city that's highly resilient. I don't have any, any doubt about that, but we, have, but we have to get through it first.